This is my WeGo Life, and it's dead. The battery pack is dead. This is my Coda with a prototype drivetrain, and this is my other Coda with a prototype drivetrain. Both of these cars are also dead, but the battery packs in them are good. They haven't been charged in years, but the lithium iron phosphate cells in these battery packs should still be mostly good. The only way to truly find out the state of the cells in all three of these battery packs is to take them out, charge them up individually, and capacity test them individually. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rip the battery packs out of each three of these cars, rip the cells out of all of them, and then individually test each cell. Or in the case of these Kodas, individually test each small bank of cells. Join me! <laughs> all three of these cars have lithium iron phosphate battery packs. The Wego's pack has a capacity of 30 kilowatt hours. This Coda's pack has a capacity of 31 kilowatt hours. And this Coda has a prototype long range battery pack that was in development by Coda, but never got fully homologated before the company went out of business. It has a capacity of 36 kilowatt hours. Because I've done it before, so I know how the process goes, I'm gonna start with the Wego. Rise! Okay, that's good, thank you. In the back of the car, if it can be even classified as such, I need to disconnect the high voltage fuse. High voltage is a term I use loosely at the moment because currently the battery pack is reading three volts. Swing that out of the way. Disconnect the power from the chargers in the back. Disconnect the high voltage leads going to the inverter. I don't know why I said leads instead of leads. Disconnect this little nubbin going to the main BMS module. Disconnect these connectors, which do something, probably. And finally, disconnect each one of the nine BMS connectors. There are only 36 cells in this entire battery pack. If you have not seen my previous video, I'll go ahead and tell you, the cells in this battery pack are massive. That's why there's only 36 of them. It's a relatively low voltage pack too, only 115 volts for a whole car. As I would find out in a second, I didn't actually need to disconnect the BMS leads before dropping the pack. They go from the battery pack to the battery pack. If you watched the first video where I dropped the pack out of the Wego, you know that this is the little wooden cart I made to drop the pack onto. But I've since modified it with these horizontal runners here. And those are so I can slip in this Harbor Freight lifty cart underneath and use this to lift up the cart rather than bringing the car down onto the cart. And there's only six bolts holding this battery in place. There were eight, but two of them got stripped, so they're not there anymore. I forgot just how much I love this battery pack. Production car company. More like batch fabricated. I mean, it's pretty well fabricated. I'll give it that. There is a free floating block of plastic here that was keeping all the BMS and stuff off of the, you know, battery connections, but mostly it's pretty well fabricated. I do believe that shelf is going to collapse. There we go, weight distribution. Hey, could you come here a second? Hmm? Yeah, what's up? I've got a few invention ideas. I wanna see what you think. Oh, invention ideas. Let's hear them, this ought to be good. Okay, these are good. First one, imagine you're looking at a wall, right? But you can see through it. You can, it's still a wall, but you can see through to the other side of the wall. A, a window? Oh no, did someone already invent it? Yes. How have you never seen a window before? Well, what's it made of? Glass? How dare you call me that? No, gla- it, never mind. What's your next big idea? Okay, you didn't like the last one, but I bet you're gonna love this one. Imagine you want to say something, but without speaking it, right? Okay. Okay, so you want to write it down. Did you invent the pen too? No, I know what a pen is. What I've invented is something to use that pen on. What I'm picturing is like this large-ish flat surface that's white, so you can really see the ink paper. That, you use, it's paper, it's paper. Someone invented that too? And they gave it a stupid name, paper? I would've come up with something better. Do you have any more ideas? Do you wanna invent the door next, maybe? No, I know what a door is. How do you think I got in here? Well, not through the window, apparently. Okay, okay, I promise, I know you didn't like the last two, but I promise this one's good. Imagine an app on your phone. Hang on, you just went from paper to phone app. 
I'm listening. You got me. Okay, so you're interested. Imagine an app on your phone that connects to your bank account. It monitors your spending and wait, I'm going to stop you there. That one is a good idea, but it's already been done. It's called Truebill. Truebill? Now, I bet it's different than what I was thinking. I was imagining an all-in-one personal finance platform that helps you save more and spend less. No, that's exactly what Truebill is, like word for word. Hmm. Well, I bet it doesn't have as many features as the thing I came up with. I bet it does. Can it track your recurring charges and tell you what subscriptions you have? Yes, and it can cancel your unwanted subscriptions for you. For instance, last month, I noticed that I was still paying for Peacock. Obviously, I don't want that anymore, so I had it cancel it for me. Okay. Can it tell you what bills you have due? Yes. And it can negotiate bills for you. Last month, I had it lower my internet bill. Yeah, okay. Well, I guess it does sound better than my idea. Yeah, that's pretty great. It can set up smart budgets for you. It can send you automatic smart notifications about your spending. For instance, last month, it told me I spent at McDonald's. Which I'm not particularly proud of. It's pretty great. It can do a lot. Fine. I guess I don't have any good invention ideas. Where can I get Truebill? Well, you can try it out for free and unlock more features with premium by going to truebill.com slash aging wheels. And thanks to Truebill for sponsoring this video. Truebill.com slash aging wheels. I could use some of that paper you were talking about. I'm running out of space on my hand. Next up is the Coda with the production spec battery pack. Assuming I can manage to push it out of here, which is a tall order. The problem is the tires are so flat that the, they're sagging and touching the ground through the dollies. So quite a bit of drag. I took a piece of scrap bar and put a bend in it with the press. Now I can stick that in here underneath the tire and the middle of the tire that is extraordinarily flat won't sag down and touch the floor. Make it easier to push now. There we go. Now I can push it around much better. Now it feels like moving a 3,500 pound car as opposed to, I don't know, a stubborn toddler. You are now witnessing the slowest overtaking maneuver in history. I want you to keep in mind, this is not a stock Coda. It's a development car with a prototype drivetrain and just about everything with the front end has been messed with. Okay, with that disclaimer out of the way, it's like that on both sides. Now you might be thinking, Robert, how do you know how to drop a battery pack out of a Coda? I don't. I've never done it before. But thankfully, the guy that gave me these cars also gave me this. The Coda press kit that they gave out to journalists during the launch event. Basically just a flash drive with a fancy card-shaped skin on it. It's a really interesting piece of memorabilia, but what's more important to me is what the guy put on it. The service manual for Coda. And it's not just any service manual, it's incomplete. The, I assume, one person that was working on it didn't get it finished before the company went out of business. So it's full of placeholder images, no images, and entire placeholder sections that they planned to fill later, but never got to. But thankfully, the one section that I need, which is how to drop the battery pack, is fully detailed, so I have instructions. I've unplugged the 12 volt battery. That's a bit of a lie. It's been unplugged for like five years. And the next step is to remove the manual service disconnect from the front of the battery, which goes here. And as you can see, there is nothing here, so that's done. Next, it says to unplug the connector from the front power distribution box, so I shall do that. Oh, I like nice sturdy connectors like that instead of, you know, unbolting something like you do in the Wego. Now I need to remove the rear seat cushion to get access to the top of the battery pack through an access panel in here. Wow, this is mind-blowingly light. There's the access panel. High voltage. Service must be performed by qualified personnel only. Well, too bad. <laughs> Spiders. Unclip and remove the rear service disconnect. That's this big one here. There we go. God, that was hard. Now this little guy is labeled as the interlock. I don't actually know what that means. A little securing clip there. There's one. There we go. That is the connection from the charging cables. Remove the inlet and return duct. I know these are coolant hoses and they look like they carry liquid, but they don't. This is an air-cooled battery pack. Coda was really squeamish about mixing liquid with their batteries. So instead they just used air cooling and heating. And lastly, I need to remove this skid plate looking thing from the back. That's the wrong way. I know I said lastly, this is not the last step. Got it. Now I need to get in there and release this BMS connector. 
which is held in place by a locking ring. I can't get a grip on it, so let's try these guys. Now oh, it's going good. Got it. It's unbolting time. I think that's everything. Let's see if it lowers down. Whoa, it's a little too fast there, Harbor Freight Cart. Oh, geez. <laughs> it just collapses out. Oh, there's more hoses. Crap. These are the two hoses I missed. Turns out these are both the inlet duct and the two other hoses were both the return duct. But the hose clamps are way down in there. There's no way I have access to them, but it looks like the hoses clip on to a manifold that's held on by six screws. So I'm gonna see if I can get those off with a long bit screwdriver. Oh no, grab, grab. It's stripped. All right, that didn't work either. So another plan is to disconnect the hoses from the other side. They're not very long and maybe I can pull them through. There we go. Oh. <laughs> I broke, I broke it. Yeah, I broke that piece off. Slowly. Oh, well, yeah, that wasn't slow. It didn't come out particularly easy, but it, it did come out. So there we go. This pack is so much more professional looking than the thing that came out of the Wego. That looks like a DIY project and kind of was. Also has significantly more spiders on it. That's a brown recluse. Uh, and I don't know how to take it apart, but I'll have to figure it out. It's a good thing I got a good pair of snap ring pliers because nearly the entire perimeter of this battery pack is held in by snap rings. There's a few bolts, but mostly snap rings holding this metal compression band in place because the edge of the battery pack is pretty thin plastic. That's all the snap rings, bolts, metal bands, and foam that were around the edge of this thing. As you can see, it's just pretty thin plastic around the edge holding in the cap. Okay, that should be everything. Let's reveal the secrets within. Oh boy, wow, that is beautiful. Oh man. Each one of these modules or sections or whatever you want to call it is putting out about 9.75 volts. And the good news is each module is, is, is within two one hundredths of a volt of each other. So that's a pretty good sign already. Now, because this battery pack does have some charge to it, I went out and bought some rubbery gloves. These are not actually rated for electrical working. They're just rubbery, but they'll be better than bare hands for sure. I won't lie, disassembling this battery pack is intimidating. Never done it before, don't know the proper way to do it. And it's so well put together. Look what they did with the BMS wires. They're so neatly tacked in place. At least I won't have to put this whole battery pack back together. I have no interest in the thing as a whole. I only have interest in the cells as individual cells. So let's figure this out. Great, I have to use hand tools. Ah. You know the difference between this battery pack and the Wego, aside from everything? This one has branding from the company that built it because they're proud of it. I have no idea who put, the, put together the Wego's battery pack, but they didn't put their name on it. Okay. There's this strip. I don't know what kind of plastic this is. It looks like it's milled, machined, rather than injection molded. In fact, I'm 90% sure it is. Now to unplug all the BMS connections. And these are thermometer leads. Can I just pull those out? Yes. Okay, now I think this piece of plastic just pulls right up. I think it's just stuck down with some adhesive. And, oh, 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 look at that. Now I knew these were all gonna be spot welded together. I didn't expect it to look so pleasant though. Wow, how do I get it out of here? That is the next question. Pull it out. Oh, ho, ho. module one. <gasps> what the heck? These are sandwiched pieces of nickel. I thought these were solid bus bars. Sitting on top of the back of the pack here, we have the main high voltage connector. I believe this is a shunt resistor for measuring current. A couple of little fuses right here. There's a contactor for both the negative and the positive. That may be out of the ordinary, or maybe everyone does that. 
Big old fuse here. This is the main BMS and the four supplementary LMUs, lithium management units, and little edge of pack connector. Now these are both sitting on two trays that are on top of the rest of the modules, so I need to remove all of this crap before I can remove the remaining modules from the battery pack. Last module. I'm so glad I'm not putting this battery pack back together because, well, you saw it. It's scary in here. I don't think I'd be able to get it back together. And in the process of dismantling the battery pack, two of the thermistors died. They got stuck in their little holes and they ripped them out. Now that I've dismantled the CODIS battery pack, I can tell you more about it. Each cell in the CODIS pack is a lithium iron phosphate cell rated at 3.2 volts nominal because that's how lithium iron phosphate do. There are 624 of these cells in the CODA's battery pack, wired in the 6P104S configuration, which means six cells wired in parallel, and then 104 of those six cell banks wired in series, giving the entire battery pack a nominal voltage output of 332.8 volts. Now, I thought that each cell was rated at 14 amp hours of capacity, but if the battery pack truly is 31 kilowatt hours, then the math says that each cell is actually 15.5 amp hours, or 49.7 watt hours. Now, that's the 31 kilowatt hour pack. The 36 kilowatt hour pack, the bigger one that I'm going to pull out of the other Coda, it's different in one way. Instead of a 6P104S configuration, it's a 7P104S configuration. So it has 104 additional cells, which would be a battery size increase overall of 16.7%. Now let's take a module apart. Now I had it in my head that a CODA's battery pack isn't very user serviceable because of all the spot welding. And that was an understatement. Not only are all of the cells spot welded together, beautifully I might add, but all of the strips are spot welded over top of this plastic housing. So to get it out of this plastic housing, I have to destroy all of these beautiful spot welded nickel strips, which will hurt. But ain't nothing to it but to do it. So let's start by cutting all of these straps that hold the two halves together. Let's take off the shielding from the outside. Oh, it's just one solid piece. Okay, I might be able to pry them up painfully and slowly. <sighs> okay. I need to figure out a much faster way and better way to do that, because that was awful. Every single one of these cells is showing 3.29 volts exactly, so that is a pretty good sign. Again, these battery packs have not been charged in years. They have just been sitting. Last car, the dirty one. I may or may not have done some woodworking on it. At some point last year, I stood on the trunk of this car to get to the mini split that was behind it because I don't really care about this trunk lid. And big old flakes of Bondo started coming off of it, revealing that this car used to be white. The whole thing has been Bondoed and repainted at some point. I already told you this is the bigger battery pack, but if I didn't tell you, you could tell from the outside because you can see it down there. This pack is physically wider. From what I understand, the reason they didn't get this pack homologated, this bigger 36 kilowatt hour pack, is because they couldn't get it to pass crash tests for side impacts. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I remember. Well, not only is the high voltage disconnect loop already gone, but all four of the air ducts are already disconnected, so raising that up in the air was a waste of time. Hey look, it's an electric car with an oil pan. Again, whoever decided to put a CVT in an electric car is just wrong. And this car is far more disgusting than the others. That, that's all rat poop. I think this seat is undone. Yes, I can just pick it up. Which is good, because I didn't want to dig in there to find bolts. Jeez. Oh. It's already disconnected. <laughs> Someone put this cover back on and just smashed it over that. Wow, that sounds like a War of the world sound effect. This pack is loaded with paperwork, the least interesting of which is the plaque on the side. It was made by Lyshen Miles Power Battery Systems 
on 716. And more interestingly, it has paperwork on top of it. A bunch of papers taped to it. This one doesn't have anything particularly interesting. It does have a date on here, 1-18-2012. Ignore the dead spiders. Outgoing inspection report. A traveler with a serial number. Another date, which is the date of manufacture. I just wrote on the side. Someone's name, Felix da Avil something. Contactors were replaced on February 13th, 2012. And that claim is backed up by this sticker right here. <laughs> This is so cool! This pack is really interesting because the basic pack itself seems to be the same size as the 31 kilowatt hour pack, and the lid is exactly the same. It's the same plastic molding and everything. The difference is in these wings on the side. You can see it over there, which appear to just be hollow air channels. On the 31 kilowatt hour pack, which is just over here out of frame, the air channels are inboard inside this plastic housing, but it appears on this one they fill all that with battery cells and move the air channels to the outside. Oh, 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 oh no, this one's dirty. <laughs> oh God. Oh no, what's all that in the back? Oh dear God. Oh, things have been in here. Oh no. Before we get into the atrocities, here's the bigger modules. The other pack had 18 modules that were 6P6S. This has 16 modules that are 7P7S. Now for the problem side, that's a rat's nest and this entire area of the battery pack smells awful and is covered in rat poop. They obviously got in through the wide open air ducts in the front of the pack. So let me take a minute to clean this up. Luckily the only damage I can see aside from the horrendous urine smell is this wire and this wire. This one hasn't even been chewed through and this one obviously is very easy to connect. It just goes to the contactor. And there's one little thermistor down here that's been nibbled on, but it looks like it's not fully damaged. It's just been nibbled on. So it looks like it's all good. I just went through and probed every single seven parallel bank of cells and all of them are either reading 3.33 or 3.32 volts with the one exception of this bank here that it's only reading 3.30 volts. That's all to say, this whole pack is good. Let me show you my cell testing setup. I bought four DC power supplies so I can individually charge four cells at a time. I've got them set to 3.6 volts and 10 amps. To charge an individual cell, it will charge at a constant current until the voltage is reached, which in this case is 3.6 volts, and then it'll charge at a constant voltage, and as the cell charges up, the amperage will slowly taper off until it hits zero, at which point the cell is fully charged. You can see this one is already at that point. Then there's the capacity testers. I bought four of them, again, to test four individual cells at a time. All these do is apply a load to each cell in the form of a resistive heater. That's what all these fans are for. And then it measures how much power it draws from the cell until it hits a minimum cutoff voltage. On each one of these, I have the minimum cutoff voltage set at 2.5 volts and the power draw set at 5 amps. Charging these cells and then capacity testing them both takes several hours, so I've only managed to test eight of these cells so far. And here's the results in amp hours. We've got 14.83, 15.08, 14.91, 14.86, they're basically all the same capacity, plus or minus 0.1 of an amp hour. And that little bit, a bit of variance can be explained by these crappy cheap power supplies I bought off Amazon. I mean, look at them, jumping all over the place. And that one on the end there like to slightly overcharge the cell, so those have slightly higher capacity. As for the difference between what I expected and what I actually got, you remember I said if the pack out of the Coda is truly 31 kilowatt hours, then each one of these cells should be 15.5 amp hours but that's pretty easily explained. I charged these cells to 3.6 volts. Coda charged them to 3.65. So that could explain the missing half an amp hour. Now that you've seen my capacity testing set up, you can see that testing the 624 cells out of just one battery pack will take a very long time. So I'm not going to. I don't really see the need to. I tested the voltage out of every single bank, out of both packs, and they were all within one one hundredth of a volt of each other. So I don't really see the need to test them. I'm still gonna test these, because I've already ripped them out of their module. They're right here in front of me, I might as well. And I'm gonna test the cells out of the Wego, because they're very dead. This one is reading 0.3 of a volt. 
Maybe some of them will be revivable. I suspect most of them won't. But the rest of the cells that are still in the modules or still in that coda pack that I just took apart, they're gonna stay there. Before I started this project, what I wanted to do with all of these cells was lithium swap my currently lead acid battery powered mower. And if I had enough good LifePo4 cells left over, I wanted to build a new battery pack to revive the Wego to make it live again. But now that I've ripped open both of these Coda packs and seen that they're essentially 100% good, my plans have changed slightly. I still want to do the thing with the mower with the modules I have sitting on a shelf over there, but as for this 36 kilowatt hour pack, I'm going to leave it totally untouched. I mean, I'll clean up all the rat poop and pee over here and reconnect the chewed up wires, but otherwise leave it completely untouched. And I want to put this in my drivable Coda because unless I'm mistaken, this would be a plug and play swap for 10, 20 miles more range. And I'd have the only 36 kilowatt hour Coda on the road. So that'd make me feel pretty special in a very unique niche sort of way. And if it turns out that some of these cells are bad, well, there's no easier way to find out than by putting it in a car, is there? Then assuming everything on that swap goes well, then I can take the 31 kilowatt hour pack that's currently in my driver Coda, rip it all to pieces and use the cells to make this Wego here live again. But here's a question for you. Is that okay? Is it okay to take a perfectly good Coda battery pack and rip it to shreds just to make this piece of garbage live again? There's only so many Coda battery packs left in the world. They're certainly not going to make any more. Is it all right to destroy one? Or should I keep it and wait for a Coda owner that needs a battery pack? Maybe I'm just overthinking this. Let me know what you think in the comments. So there you go. That's what's been hiding inside my three dead EVs. Two unexpectedly, totally solid, usable battery packs, and then the Wego. I guess that just goes to show how incredibly robust lithium iron phosphate cells are. I'll have an update video in a few weeks telling you what the capacity of all these cells that I test were, including the giant ones that I took out of the Wego, and maybe a little update on plans. Until then, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.